The T-90 is a Russian third-generation main battle tank that is essentially a modernized T-72B with several of the T-80U's attributes. It was originally to be called the T-72BU, later renamed to T-90. It is now the most advanced tank in Russian ground forces and naval infantry service. During the 1999 Chechen invasion of Dagestan, the T-90A was used in combat. Once, T-90A was struck by seven RPG anti-tank rockets but remained operational. Moscow Defense finds that the T-90A appears to be the best protected Russian tank with standard equipment, especially when the Stora and Arena defensive protection systems are installed. In 2007, the Russian Ground Forces 5th Guards Tank Division stationed in the Siberian military district had roughly 334 T-90 tanks, and the Russian Navy had seven T-90 tanks. In 2007, 31 new T-90 tanks were slated to enter service, with another 60 expected in 2008. The Russian Ministry of Defense announced in 1992 that it could no longer afford to produce two main battle tanks at the same time. The government gave limited orders to both the quality, the T-80U, and the quantity, T-72B, because they were constructed at distinct plants and each facility was essential to the economy of its city. OMSK constructed 5 T-80Us and Nizhny Dagil built 15 T-72s, with both companies planning to build more in the future in the hopes of securing major export orders. Nizhny Dagil had constructed a few T-72BAs, which were T-72Bs with the third-generation add-on explosive reactive armor, ERA, known as Contact 5, which was already in use on the T-80U. To increase the T-72's export prospects and chances of being chosen as Russia's only production main battle tank, the T-80U's more complex firing control system was fitted, resulting in the T-72BU. The Kartsev Venediktov Design Bureau in Nizhny Tagil created the T-90. The production model is based on the T-72BM, but with some T-80 series. Characteristics added. Based on a prototype dubbed T-88, the T-90 with an 830-horsepower, 620-kilowatt engine entered into low-level production in 1993. On the Holland turret, it has a new version of Contact 5 explosive reactive armor. The T-90, with its traditional layout, offers a significant upgrade to every system in the T-72, including the main armament. The T-90s have been designated as a model for export. The mentions of a T-90E appears to be unfounded. The T-90 has a three-tiered protection system, with the first tier being composite turret armor, the second tier being third-generation Contact 5 ERA, and the third tier being a Stora 1 countermeasures suite. During the invasion of Dagestan in 1999, the T-90s were employed in combat for the first time. The 2A46M 125mm smoothbore tank gun is the T-90's primary armament. This is a heavily modified version of the Sprut anti-tank gun, which is the main armament on the T-80 line of tanks. It is capable of firing armor-piercing, fin-stabilized, discarding Sabot, APFSDS, high-explosive anti-tank, HEATFS, and high-explosive fragmentation, HEFRAG, ammunition, as well as 9M119M reflex anti-tank guided missiles and may be replaced without disassembling the inner turret. The reflex missile has a dual hollow charge heat warhead and semi-automatic laser beam riding guidance. It has a range of 100 meters to 6 kilometers and takes 17.5 seconds to reach full range. Reflex can pierce steel armor up to 950 millimeters thick and engage low-flying air targets like helicopters. The commander can operate the NSV 12.7 millimeter remotely controlled aircraft heavy machine gun from within the tank. It has a range of 2 km and a cyclic rate of fire of 700 to 800 rounds per minute with 300 rounds. The PKMT 7.62mm coaxial machine gun weighs roughly 10.5 kg, with the ammunition box weighing an extra 9.5 kg and carrying 250 rounds. The 2A46M in the T-90, like other current Russian tanks, is fed by an automatic loader which eliminates the requirement for a manual loader and reduces the crew to three which contains a commander, gunner and driver. The autoloader has a carousel that can hold 22 ready-to-fire rounds and can load a cartridge in 5 to 8 seconds. The automatic loaders on recent T-90 tanks, which have been upgraded to take advantage of newer ammunition such as the 3BM44M APFSDS, which, like the US M829A3, penetrates armor better than prior shorter rounds. The 3BK21B, 3BK29, and 3BK29M are heat rounds that may be fired from the 2A46M. The INET fuse setting device on the T-90 allows the tank to detonate three OF-26 HE frag rounds at a particular distance from the tank as measured by the gunner's laser rangefinder, increasing its performance against helicopters and infantry. 
During state testing, the T-95 control system demonstrated the following combat shooting features. Tank T-90 attacks heavily armored objects at ranges of up to 5 kilometers while moving with a high probability of hitting the first shot. During state testing, 24 missiles were launched at ranges of 4 to 5 kilometers and all of them hit their targets. And an experienced gunner for 54 traffic at speeds of 25 km per hour fired 7 real shells at armored targets at ranges of 1500 to 2500 meters. The PNK-4S SRAG-8C day and night sighting system, which is installed at the commander station and enables for nighttime identification of a tank-sized target at ranges between 700 and 1100 meters, depending on the version of the site, is part of the T-90's fire control system. The T-01 K-01 Buran site was used on early T-90 versions. However, later models, T-90s, were modified to use the ESSA thermal imaging site, which allows for the precise fire to a range of 5,000 to 8,000 meters using Thales Optronique's Catherine FC thermal camera. The 1G46 day sighting system, which comprises a laser rangefinder and a missile guidance channel, permits tank-sized targets to be identified and engaged from a distance of 5 to 8 kilometers. A TVN 5 day and night sight are used by the driver. According to a Russian tabloid, Russia began licensed manufacturing of Thales developed Catherine FC thermal imaging cameras for T 90M tanks in 2010. These thermal images are also found on the T 90M Bhishma, which was constructed under license in India. The four stroke V 12 piston engine uprated 1,000 horsepower engines and 1,250 horsepower engines developed by Uralva Gonzavod and delivered by Chelyabinsk tractor plant power different types of the T 90 tank. The 90S has a top speed of 60 km per hour on the road and up to 45 km per hour on rough terrain, thanks to its 1,000 horsepower engine. The T 90 tank has a traditional transmission layout, with the engine and transmission located in the back. V92 four stroke, 12 cylinder engine, multi fuel diesel engines produce 1000 horsepower, whereas V96 engines produce 1250 horsepower. The modified T90S export version of the T90 is equipped with a 1000 horsepower multi fuel diesel engine with turbochargers. For work in high temperature zones, the tank is additionally equipped with an air conditioning system. A three tiered protective mechanism is installed on the T90. The first tier is the turret's composite armor, which is made up of a basic armor shell with an insert made up of alternating layers of aluminium and polymers, as well as a control the deformation section. The third tier is Contact 5 ERA, an explosive reactive armor, which reduces the penetrating capability of kinetic energy APF SDS fire and gives the turret its unique tilted clamshell appearance. The turret roof is also covered in ERA bricks, which give protection from top attack weaponry in addition to the ERA and steel plating. The turret's forward armor package includes a composite filler of Russian composite armor sandwiched between upper and lower steel plates. When compared to steel-only armor, composite armor is lighter and provides better protection. The Storal 1 countermeasures suite developed by Russia's Electromachina is the third tier. Two electro-optical IR dazzlers on the front of the turret, which give the turret its distinctive red eyes four laser warning receivers, two 3D6 aerosol grenade discharging systems, and a computerized control system are all part of this system. When the tank is painted by a weapon guidance laser, the Stora 1 informs the crew and allows them to slew the turret to face the threat. The infrared jammer disables some anti-tank guided missiles semi-automatic command to line-of-sight guidance system. When Stora senses that it has been painted, the aerosol grenades are instantly released. The aerosol grenades are used to obscure the tank from the laser rangefinders, designators and other weapons systems optics. The Stora 1 countermeasures suite is not available on Indian T-90S tanks. The LED's 150 land electronic defense system will be installed on them. The T-90 is also equipped with nuclear, biological and chemical NBC protective equipment, KMT minesweeps and an automatic firefighting system, in addition to passive and active defense systems. The T-90 can also be equipped with the EMT-7 electromagnetic countermine system. Before the tank approaches them, EMT-7 sends out an electromagnetic pulse to destroy magnetic mines and disrupt electronics. The T-90 can also use the Nakitka Signature Reduction Suite. Nakitka is intended to lessen the likelihood of an object being discovered in the infrared, thermal, radar thermal, and radar bands. That's all for today. We hope you have found the video helpful. Subscribe to The War Secrets for more amazing content, and don't forget to like and share the video. See you in good health. Goodbye.